Spirit's 
give thanks to the Lord our God and King. His love endures forever. For He is good, He is above all things. His love endures forever. Sing praise, sing praise. With, With a mighty hand and an outstretched arm, His love endures forever. For the life that's been reborn, His love endures forever. Sing praise, sing praise, sing praise, sing praise. Forever God is faithful, forever God is strong, forever God is with us. setting sun, His love endures forever, and by the grace of God we will carry on, His love endures forever. Sing praise, sing praise, sing praise, sing praise. Forever God is faithful. Good evening, welcome to our Sunday evening meeting here online at Crossway Stratford. Uh, we're pre-recording our meetings online for obvious reasons at the moment, but it's great that you've been able to tune in and join us uh, nonetheless. A great way to end off your Sunday of rest and refreshment in the Lord. As ever, we're going to be hearing from God's Word as Sam, our Assistant Minister, comes to preach to us from the Book of Romans. And later in the meeting, we're going to be hearing as well from various members of the church family uh, as they speak about what it means for them to use their gifts as part of a body. So it's great that we've got various contributors to our meeting tonight, as ever, because that's what we are. We are a body in Christ. Uh, even though we're all having to separate from each other at this time, that hasn't stopped the spiritual reality that God has brought about. We're going to be thinking about that across the course of our meeting together, that we're a body in Christ. 
Let me, before we sing, read these words from Ephesians chapter one that speak of exactly that. The Apostle Paul writes that God put all things under his feet and gave him, Jesus Christ, as head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. Of your mercy and grace, to the praise of your 
seal the Spirit of the Lord. The Spirit guarantees our hope until redemption's done, until we join in endless praise to God the Three in One. To the praise of your glory, to the praise of your mercy and So that's who we are if we're Christians tonight, part of the glorious body of Jesus Christ. But if you're like me, you'll find often your actions speak of an individualistic mindset that wants to do its own thing, that that more often uh, breaks relationships with people than it does builds necessarily. And we need to confess that to God, to admit what we're like by nature and to ask for his help to live out the reality that he's brought us into. So going to do that now by saying the words of the confession uh, to each other and, of course, to God. So let's gather our thoughts for a moment and then we'll pray together. So together, almighty God, our heavenly father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, in the evil we have done and in the good we have not done, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Let me just read to you these words from 1 Corinthians, speaking of exactly the same reality we've been enjoying all evening. 1 Corinthians 12, verse 12, the Apostle Paul says, For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. For in one spirit we were all baptised into one body. So as that one body, let's pray together in the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We're going to continue on in prayer now. Let's pray. Father, for um, many of us, um, it may feel really difficult um, to pray at the moment. Many of us are facing um, the uncertainty that this uh, period of lockdown brings. We're feeling weary uh, and worn down, pressed in on by the burdens um, that this moment is bringing. There's so much, Lord, that um, is weighing down on us. Um, And yet, Lord, um, from tonight, we, we can remember and cling on to the fact that we are members of Christ's body. And that is not a small thing. We can remember that nothing can cut us off from you. Even though in in many other ways we are cut off from one another and from uh, the kind of previous givens of normal life and not least uh, our church. We pray, Lord, earnestly that you would help us at Crossway to persevere, to hold on to you and your enduring covenant promises, knowing that even if we have the faintest of grips, 
even no grip at all. Your grip on us can never be prized away. We who have come to know you will never be cast out. In Jesus' precious name, amen. With this in mind, Lord, we pray practically uh, for those who will particularly be feeling the bite of lockdown. For those with financial worries and pressures. For that seemingly ceaseless mental and psychological strain. For, for those who are alone, or for those who feel far off for the physical burdens that this pandemic is bringing in all their varying forms. And of course, underwritten by that spiritual fatigue and brokenness. We pray, Lord, that you would help us and keep us going in this moment. We especially want to lift up the, the parents uh, of children, um, at the moment, Lord, who are having to deal with an, another term of managing homeschool and all the other pressures that are being faced, Lord, please be with them. We, we ask for your help. We know we are weak and we're unable to keep going without your action and your aid. We ask, Lord, that you would strengthen your body, even amid such trying times. Please, Lord, show your faithfulness both to us as individual souls continuing on the path to you and as people together. In your name we pray. Amen. And finally, Lord, we know that one of the main things we can do at the moment is, like this, pray like we can on Tuesday mornings this January. We pray, Lord, that you would motivate us by your grace in Jesus Christ to be people eager to enjoy and rely on our relationship with you, both as we connect online and as we practice this in our own walks with you. We pray you would conform our will to yours and that your desires and your purposes would be ours. We pray, Lord, that now would be a moment where we grow in a deep and lasting reliance on and trust in you. And lastly, as well as we look ahead to our weekend at home on the 15th to the 17th of January, Lord, we we're thinking about the end times there, the end of all things, and, and we pray that you would help us and encourage us and help us take heart that the story of this world, whatever it may look like at the moment or in the times to come, has a beautiful ending. And because of this, Lord, we pray, Lord Jesus, that you would come quickly as we eagerly await your return. In your mighty name. Amen. Thanks for leading us in prayer. Uh, now, I hope you've got in your diary that next weekend, 15th to the 17th of January, we're going to be having our weekend at home. We dearly love for it to be a weekend away, but of course, uh, the present circumstances mean that that's not possible. And so we're going to have our weekend based largely online. Uh, a certain amount of it pre-recorded so that you can listen to it at times that work for you. But of course, with chances to connect uh, virtually with each other, maybe via Zoom or other ways, uh, both uh, in terms of chewing on the content that we've been receiving and also just having some fun together. Lots of details will follow. But let me say up front that we're going to spend the weekend thinking about uh, what we sometimes call eschatology the study of the last things, the end of the world and the, the future that will follow on from that. It's absolutely central to the Bible's message and our lives today. And so I hope you'll tune into all of it and make the most of it as we feed together on what God has to say. 
And that means that next week, this meeting is going to be shifted earlier in the day. We thought we'd round off the weekend by having an extended question time live so that as you've listened across the course of the weekend, you can then send in your questions and we'll have an extended time to think through what the Bible's answers to them are. So we'll move the meeting earlier in the afternoon so that as many people uh, and families can join in as possible. More details to follow in due course. But for now, we're going to have our reading from Romans chapter 12. The reading today is taken from Romans chapter 12, verses 3 to 8. Romans chapter 12, verses 3 to 8. For by the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. For as in one body, we have many members, and the members do not all have the same function. So we, though many, are one body in Christ, and individually members one of another. Having gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, let us use them. If prophecy in proportion to our faith, if service in our serving, the one who teaches in his teaching, the one who exhorts in his exhortation, the one who contributes in generosity, the one who leads with zeal, the one who does acts of mercy with cheerfulness. Evening Crossway Stratford, let me pray for us and then we'll dig into chapter 12 together. Father, thank you so much that you are a generous God, that you are a good God, that you are the God who has shown us mercy. Thank you that you sent your son to die to save us. And we pray, Father, that we would know that that we would love that and that you would help us by your spirit to live uh, lives worthy of the gospel of Christ, to live lives in worship and praise and thanks for all you've done. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, I know lots of us thought uh, Christmas was going to be one thing and then it was another thing. I don't know what your Christmas ended up looking like, but I can bet no matter what, you all did something or one thing in common in every Christmas and I I think that was opening a gift. Maybe it was a gift that you bought for yourself, maybe it was a gift that somebody generously gave you, treated you to, maybe it was a small gift, maybe it was um, a big gift, sorry I said that was small, then I go big gift, small gift, big gift, get the actions right Sam. Uh, Maybe it was a gift that got lost on the way from Northern Ireland to England uh, because Hermes lost the box and it's a delayed gift. Um, Whatever gift it was, you received it, didn't you? You received it. And tonight Paul tells us that as Christians we've all received different gifts from God himself. You can see that actually in verse 6 onwards, Paul lists some of those gifts. And the real outbox of this evening's sermon is that each of us at Crossway really would worship with the gifts God's given us. You remember last week, Paul said these wonderful words that opened the the second half of his his letter to the Romans. He said said this, I appeal to you therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Paul said last week, all of life now, all of life for the Christian is worship. Worship's in any place, all the time activity that can transform our mundane moments, of which there have already been many for me so far in 2021, can can transform our mundane moments into opportunities to worship our rescuing God. And Paul said that every act of worship is to be done in light of God's mercies. We don't worship to gain forgiveness or a smile from God. We worship because we are forgiven already. He has saved us by the death of his son. Worship's in any place, all the time, activity done in light of God's mercies, Paul said last week. But but the question I imagine you, you went away asking was, 
that's that's great but, but what does it look like in practice what does worship on the ground look like and the first thing paul says worship looks like is using our gifts rightly in the church again that is the real outbox of this evening's talk that we at crossway stratford worship god by using our gifts rightly and the right use of our gifts actually begins with us getting a right understanding of ourselves and a right understanding of of church and a right understanding of those gifts And, and that leads to our first point this evening point one think of yourselves rightly as receivers Just look down at verse three in your Bibles. If you don't have your Bible with you, do grab one, uh, open it up if you've closed it, get it off you on your device if you that's what you're using. Um, let's get the Bibles in front of us. Verse three, Paul says, For by the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think with sober judgment. Right worship with our gifts, begins with right thinking, a right understanding about ourselves. We need to be sober thinkers. That's what sober judgment literally means. Sober thinkers, not not drunk. We all know that a little alcohol does a lot, doesn't it, in terms of inflating one's view of their own abilities. I know that we've probably all seen the videos where someone's had one too many and they've wandered down Stratford High Street looking at that lamppost thinking, that's only 10 metres high. I can definitely jump over that. You know, Red Bull gives me wings, everything like that. And they run full part of the the lamppost and it all goes horribly wrong. Paul says, don't be a spiritual drunkard. Don't think of yourself too highly. Be humble. Can you see immediately how a right understanding of ourselves, how that humble thinking is going to lead to a right use of our gifts? There's a real risk that we use our gifts in totally the wrong way, in a way that that makes us think much more highly of ourselves. But but that's not worship at all, is it? That's, That's me bigging myself up. That's not me bigging God up. Don't think of yourself more highly than you ought. And what helps us to do that when we do struggle with that pride in in our hearts when it comes to serving and using our gifts is to remember that we are receivers that we've received these gifts just look again at at verse three i guess if there was anyone who could have been high and mighty about the gifts given to them it would have been the apostle paul wouldn't it um the apostle with all his apostolic authority but just look look at verse three what does paul say about himself he says for by the grace given to me i say to everyone among you do you see what Paul says? He, he, he knows any authority that he has over the, as he speaks to these, these Roman Christians, his apostolic authority, he is not, it's, not, it's not being earned by him. He's not got it because he's somehow better than everyone else. It's an authority that he's received. God has generously given it to him. And then look at the end of, at the end of verse Three. Paul's told us to think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. Now, people take that to mean a different thing. Some say Paul's telling us to measure ourselves all against the same objective standard, the Christian faith, you know, faith with a capital C and a capital F. So we've got to measure ourselves against the gospel and that is what humbles us and it's the same gospel each of us measures ourselves against. I don't think that's what it means. I I think it means more what it sounds like when we read it. God's God's assigned to people different measures of faith. Paul will go on in chapter 14 to talk about weaker faith and stronger faith. And and we might, the minute we hear that, we might go... (gasps) We might think, my goodness me, that, surely that's just going to encourage boasting. It's going to be the exact opposite of what Paul wants, this humble, this humble outlook. But the antidote to boasting 
isn't let's all pretend God's given us exactly the same thing and we're all the same. This passage is actually all about God giving everyone different things. The antidote to boasting, rather, is remembering that anything you do have has been given to you by a generous God. End of verse three. Each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned, has given. You're just a receiver. You're just a receiver, Christian. So don't boast. It's the same idea in verse six. Having gifts. Look down at verse six. Having gifts that differ, again, differ according to the grace given to us. Again, we've all been given different gifts and we shouldn't think we're we're better or worse because of the gift that we've been given. Whatever gift we have, we've received it. So don't boast. We've received grace, we've received different gifts, we've received measures of faith and receiving things eliminates boasting. We don't big up ourselves when we receive something, do we? The, the, the child at Christmas, they don't pat themselves on the back as they open up their present. They rush over to the person who's given it to them. They give them a big hug. Be humble, Paul says. Don't big up yourself. Big up the giver, your generous God. Think of yourselves rightly as receivers. And of course, immediately, this begins to kill any sort of pride we might be tempted to feel at Crossway Stratford as we serve. Getting into God's family, uh, it's, it's not like getting into any old club, is it? I was part of a badminton club a couple of years ago, or many years ago now, actually. And um, if you were really good at badminton, there was this one club, 7.30 till 8.30. And then there, the club kind of magically transformed into this other type of club, 8.30 to 9.30. That was for all the advanced players and certain players kind of trooped off and other players hung around and if you were good enough at moving a shuttlecock around a court you got from you you magically moved from this this 7 30 to 8 30 club to the 8 30 to 9 30 club and uh, even within that club in terms of how people carried themselves out well there was this there was this hierarchy there was the top court that was uh, at the uh, right at the other end of the sport so it wasn't called that but everyone knew that it was the top court with all of the top badminton players and you could just you could smell pride everywhere people wandering around a bit high and mighty constant comparison going on uh, when it came to participating and maybe some of us have been part of those sorts of those sorts of clubs we enter them and there's hierarchy and there's cliques and and intimidating people according to the various different abilities that there are there but the church isn't a club and therefore what our church looks like should be very different the the entry requirement into God's people doesn't depend on reaching a certain ability you just you just need to have received abundant mercy like we saw last week the part you play at crossway stratford well that too that's based on having received something as well and that is a pride killer isn't it straight away we entered the church through receiving mercy any particular part we play in the church Well, that came through receiving grace. That's how real worship with our gifts begins. Think of yourselves rightly as receivers. And next, point two, think of the church rightly as a body. Just look down at verse four. For as in one body, we have many members and the members do not all have the same function. So we, though many, are one body in Christ and individually members one of another. Now, I think we really need this picture of church at this particular moment. It is so easy to be wrong in our thinking at this time about what church actually is, because, of course, the pandemic has made us feel more separate than ever before. But as we've been thinking about all evening, 
We are one body together under the Lord Jesus. Isn't that amazing? Like when you see other people popping up in Zoom windows after Sunday mornings or evenings or um, in the middle of the week, Wednesday and Thursday, or when you, when you go walking with another Crossway family member in the park for an hour, the hour is kind of maximum I can do it, and then it's absolutely freezing. When you're walking around, you are walking with a member of your own body. You're looking in Zoom, when they're on parts of your body that you are looking at. We are so connected together. We're even called, look at the end of verse 5, individually members one of another. I mean, that is huge, isn't it? How much does that challenge the individualistic culture that we swim around in? If we are Christians, Crossway Stratford, we belong to each other. And that, of course, is really wonderful to know, especially in this moment. But, but it, it's particularly great when, when it comes to worshipping God with our gifts. You see, we all have different gifts on purpose. The fact that one is great at exhorting, as Paul's going to say later, but another isn't. And instead is, is great at showing acts of, doing acts of mercy, which I think here means uh, seeing physical need and meeting it. Those differences aren't things to be embarrassed about, that one's good at this and the other's, the other's good at that. Those differences are wonderful. Effectiveness in difference is precisely what makes for a healthy body, isn't it? A body works best when all the different parts fulfil their different functions, when they get on with doing what they do best. I mean, can you imagine for a second, can you imagine for a second, if my, my brain suddenly thought, I don't want to be a brain anymore, I know I'm good at being a brain, I want to be a stomach now, I'm going to decide, that's what I'm going to do, I'm going to attempt to do all the work that the stomach does, um, and I don't know, perhaps my brain starts sending signals to my hands, and I start grabbing bits of cake and shoving them into my ears, and that's how my brain attempts to digest it. That would not be good for my body. That would be an absolute nightmare. I would end up with a headache in the space of a couple of minutes. And to be honest, I'd be, I'd be very hungry as well, wouldn't I? Because my, wouldn't get, my tummy wouldn't get any food. Can you imagine the other way around? The stomach start. to be honest, this is probably Christmas for us, wasn't it? The stomach starts saying, I'm going to do the thinking. I'm going to do the thinking. I want to be, instead of the brain doing what the brain does best, I'm going to start doing that now. And the stomach decides it's going to do that. Um, that would be a nightmare. Uh, I would not stop eating. Every time I got up, I'd fall over. The body works best when all the different parts work together. And we need all those different parts, don't we? Instead, we don't want a body without a brain, but with five stomachs. Or a body without um, one stomach, but five brains. Every part of the body is valuable. Every part of the body is needed. And of course, of course, that helps us to think about the gifts amongst us at Crossway Stratford. One gift is not more valuable than another gift. We don't, we don't think, oh, I've got the gift of Bible teaching, so good old me, I must be the really important member of the body. We don't think that. Please pray against that sort of attitude with any of our gifts. Pray against that for us as Bible teachers, for Jamie and myself and, and others who are uh, particularly kind of upfronty against that sort of pride. No, no, no. We, we, we recognise the different parts we have to play and we are very thankful for every part doing its job. We've got the arms working hard. We've got the legs working hard, the fingers working hard. We all need each other. We're all needed for the work of ministry at Crossway Stratford. I, I want us to know that as we head into 2021. We are all needed so that the body can function. It might be easier, mightn't it, at times like this, not to think that. Uh, I mean, it's easy, isn't it, to think church is something that we can turn up to just as an attendee to, uh, turning up to a, a match. The main players are on the pitch and we're watching them. If you're watching tonight, please know you are, you're needed. You're not, an in, you're not an attender of a game. You are a member of the body. We're connected to each other. We need each other, serving with the various different gifts that God has given us. And doesn't this help us 
not just to begin to get using our gifts, but, but to use them rightly in terms of how we, we think about our gift, in terms of how we think about others' gifts around us. I think one of the reasons that we can stop serving or, or not step up and, and serve or serve with wrong motives is due to comparison, isn't it? Perhaps we look at someone else's gifts and we think, um, we think, oh, I want that one. I want that one. Or we've been told we use, uh, you know, we've also, got, we've also got the same gift as somebody else. Um, but actually we think, well, they're so much better than me at doing that thing, even though somebody else says I'm, I'm gifted in that way too. It's another form of pride, really, that, isn't it? Uh, I wish I could lead Bible studies like so-and-so. I wish I was a, as good at meeting needs practically as that, as that brother. I wish I was so good pastorally with others as that sister. And I'm crippled by comparison. And then, of course, I end up doing nothing. Uh, and maybe that's something you've experienced. That's something, certainly something I've experienced. But I, I found verses five and six really helpful this week because I'm reminded again that church isn't a club where all of the members might, might compete against one another. To get, you know, try and get on the top court or whatever. It, it's a body where all of the parts belong to each other and need each other. Go back to those, those comical scenarios where the brain wishes it was as good uh, being the stomach as the stomach is. That, that's needless comparison, isn't it? Actually, the brain should be thinking, the very fact I've got a brilliant stomach, that is, that is good for me as the brain of this body. That's a really good thing. I'll keep being the brain and uh, the stomach can keep being the stomach. Well, the stomach thinking, I'm, it's, isn't it great? It should be thinking, that's great, we've got a brain that's working really well. I'll keep being the stomach, doing what I do best, and, and it's great that we've got the brain working, because we're connected. When one part of the body is thriving, it benefits all, all the parts of the body. So if somebody else is really great at leading Bible studies, that is really great for me, whether or not that's my gift. I, I can stop comparing and thank God, the generous giver. And then I can start thinking about the gifts he might have given me so I can help serve as well because I'm part of a body that needs me, not part of a, a club. Well, worship with our gifts, how does it start? It starts by remembering that we're all receivers and by remembering we're all part of a body. And once our thinking straight on all that, Paul says, point three, use your gifts rightly for others. Look down at verse six. Having gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, let us use them. If prophecy in proportion to our faith, if service in our serving, the one who teaches in his teaching, the one who exhorts in his exhortation, the one who contributes in generosity, the one who leads with zeal, the one who does acts of mercy with cheerfulness. Now, the obvious outbox of all that Paul has been saying is that we really will start using our gifts to serve others, to bless one another. Uh, we really will start using our gifts in worship. Uh, Paul gives one of the, his gift lists. He gives a few in the New Testament. You could find another in 1 Corinthians 12 uh, and another in Ephesians 4. And the point of this list in particular isn't that we, we get to know each gift in real detail, but to make the point that each gift is really to be used as it should be. Each gift is to be used for the purpose it's intended, humbly in service of others, not, not to big ourselves up. And I guess a really practical application of having just looked through these gifts and thinking about where Paul's been driving this is to, is to think, what gifts might the Lord have given me that I could be using to serve the body at the moment? Maybe uh, you could get somebody else to answer that question for you. I know uh, it's, it's the case that lots of us are, are really helped there by others speaking in and saying, well, I think you've got the gift of this, or I think God's given you this gift. And um, people sometimes know ourselves a little bit better in that way than we do. And then once you've got your answers, think, well, if I've got that gift, what opportunities are there to, to genuinely use that gift as part of the body at Crossway? Uh, and of course, gifts, you could start doing that now, couldn't you? So gifts aren't rotor dependent. I've looked through these gifts. I don't think none of them requires a rotor for us to be on. 
uh, in order to get serving. If someone's told me I'm a particularly generous person, what particular needs are there in the church family right now? Maybe because of the pandemic particularly. Uh, how might I be able to like, meet those needs with my generosity? If somebody has told me I'm particularly good when it comes to exhortation and encouraging others in their Christian walk, how might I put that gift to work for the sake of, of others? How might I exhort in my exhortation? And then um, what, about, what about this one? Prophecy. I think here that means uh, applying God's word uh, to a particular person's life, comforting them and building them up. What opportunities are there at Crossway for that? And can I particularly encourage you to, to be thinking about that, to be asking that question? If you're new, please, please do get thinking, how can I serve? How can I be using my gifts at Crossway? Because you're not just an attender. Uh, even if we haven't met face to face, I mean, it must sound so weird to say this. We haven't met face to face, but you're part of the body. You're part of the body. We need each other. And I, I'm aware that exercising our gifts um, when we think the whole church family, that, that might be a little bit intimidating, mightn't it? So, so why not just think a little bit smaller? You could start with your, your group, your small group. How, how has God gifted me? in order to serve my Wednesday night crew, my Thursday night crew this week. There'd be great things to be thinking about as we close this evening. Well, that is, that is Romans 12 verses three to eight, serving one another in the church with the gifts God's given us. And, and that is worship. The start of God saying in, in very practical ways, now that's what I call worship. Worship that bigs him up, not ourselves. As we remember that we are receivers. As we remember that we are part of the body. As we get on and serve the church with the gifts we've been given by our merciful, gracious God. Let me pray as we close. Father God, we thank you so much that you have equipped the church with different gifts. You've given each one of us different gifts. Father, please help us be thankful for the gifts that you've given us. Please help us uh, recognise those gifts. Please help others to point them out to us. And then, Father, please help us to use those gifts, not to glorify ourselves, not to big ourselves up. Help protect us from that sort of pride when it comes to gifts, Father, for comparing our gifts to others and that sort of that sort of thinking. Father, please, would you help us use the gifts you have given us to serve your body? We're members of one another, Father. Please, would you help us at Crossway be really distinct, uh, be a body of believers that look after one another, that bless one another, that use our gifts to serve each other and in worship of you. And we pray this, that Jesus might get the glory. In his name. Amen. Thank you, Sam, very much for preaching for us. Straight away, as you've listened to Sam preaching, you can see these are, are words from the book of Romans that immediately apply to us in our day-to-day -day life, even in the current circumstances. And so we thought it would be great to just hear from a few members of the church family about how they see and use their gifts in service of his body. And so I caught up with them a little earlier this week. OK, now listening to what Sam's been saying, uh, there's immediately loads of ways I'm sure we can think about applying this so I thought it would be great to get uh, Sarah and Louis and Elspeth together to talk about this because these are all wonderful people who uh, are regularly serving and being served and it would be great to hear from them and think this through so thank you uh, you three very much for, for being willing to talk why don't you start by telling us about how you find this image of being a body with um, different parts helpful for thinking about your service? Well, I think um, personally, um, we understand that the body has many parts and we are all part of the body. Um, but I think it's also important for us to know that the body itself has a function. Um, so, you know, if there's, ever, if there's ever times where I feel discouraged um, to serve in a certain way, I'm reminded of what the, the body, what the church is for. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm just a small part of the church, but I'm contributing to a greater mission and contributing to something that's much bigger 
and that's every Sunday, every day, um, with, with, you know, just the small actions that I do. And I think it's worth remembering uh, how each part of the body really does have its own job that it, it can do very well in some cases, not so well in other cases, but it still needs to be done. We can all do something uh, with all of our different gifts to bring to that body. Yeah, it's great, isn't it, to think of a togetherness that serves a, a kind of higher cause, as it were. It draws us out of ourselves and gets us um, uh, and gets us looking towards others and, and in a really complementary way that serves Jesus Christ. So it's very, like it might seem practical and gritty and earthy sometimes to serve, but to think of it as being part of that, that higher thing is really strengthening, I think. And it's also uh, encouraging. I mean, if there's ever a moment that you feel that you're serving on your own, you're not because you're connected to something much bigger. You know, if there's ever a Sunday where you wake up and maybe you don't feel like logging into Zoom after church or uh, there's a Sunday where you don't feel like serving uh, as you know you should be serving, being part of a collective um, is encouraging because it means you can be kind of carried by other people. Yeah, I hope that makes sense. I feel like I haven't made sense. So mm. I'm to cut I think there's, <laughs> there are quite a few Sundays where you think, oh, I can't be bothered doing Zoom this week. But I don't, I think, I don't think there's ever been a time when I've come off Zoom and thought, well, that was a waste of time. I've always come off Zoom thinking, oh, that was really good to talk to them. That was really good to hear what they had to say. Really good to find out what they're doing. And I think Zoom has just been a, a, a terrific way to find out what's going on and to actually communicate with the other members of the church. And especially if you can do it morning and evening, because you get to see more people. So that's the body. That is the body kind of strengthening itself, basically, mm. isn't it? Let's get practical then in talking about this in, in your experience. Let's think about how, how do you use your gifts practically to serve the body? So, I mean, I, I was saying earlier, I think that I'm one of the very few people that lockdown has really suited because I think I am much more of a one-to-one -one person. I think God has definitely kind of given me gifts and encouragement and building people a lot. But I think part of that is that I kind of constantly analyze everything all the time. So one-to-one -one suits me so much more because I can really get to the heart of people. I can see exactly what's going on. What are the good things? What are the bad things? Like, what do you need help with? Or what can we, like, joy in with each other? Yeah, it's been wonderful to kind of utilize that gift. Um, and I think it's great because it's not just that I can serve other people. But that if I feel like I'm sacrificing time, like it's not a sacrifice I resent because I'm being built up at the same time. The same way that like I think I'm coming to build up them, I always leave and they're building up me. Like there's always new stuff that God wants you to yeah. learn. And you can learn so much from the other people around you. Mm -hmm. So that's been really great. And you and you've been on walks with Elspeth to encourage <laughs> each other. Yes, I have. Don't go into yeah. details. We've heard, yeah. I, I have yeah. got Elspeth very lost on Vox, but we had lots of extra time to build each other up and it was fantastic. <laughs> uh, how about you, Elspeth? Probably I, I do a lot of practical serving, whether it's food being cooked or um, babysitting or fixing people's trousers or whatever. But um, those always give you opportunities to actually ch talk to the person as well. I think, ironically, one of the best ways to serve people is when I've when I've popped around when they've just had a new baby or when it's someone needing wedding dresses altered or something. You get to actually talk to the person and, and really find out how to pray for them, what their concerns are, what their joys are. And you can you can celebrate with them and weep with them sometimes. And I think doing something practical really does help you get to know the people better. Yeah, I think for us as well, um, so I'm currently serving with the youth and we've had a transition over the last 10 months from seeing them every Sunday, having snacks and playing games, that kind of thing, to being online. And as much as it hasn't been the same um, because you're not with them personally, being online means there's still an opportunity to serve. And so, um, you know, as we know in, in the Christian life, you can't measure fruit. You don't know how far your serving is going, but you do trust that God is doing something with it. So... Um, for me, the motivation has been just do it, as, you know, do what you can with what you have and let God yeah. do the rest. I think as well, there's so few times where you do use your gifts. And when you're doing it to glorify God, that you don't also get back from that. 
And I think it is wonderful that it does go both ways. I mean, let's talk about that a bit more. Having talked about how you use your gifts in serving, to t- talk a little bit about your experience of how have you found you've been on the receiving end of people serving you? I think often I, I might just get a, a WhatsApp from someone saying, are you OK? Uh, and that's enough to make me think, oh, yeah, hang on, I'm not. I need to talk about this. Or, it, or the practical side, we don't have a car. And I know that there are people that I could call on if I needed help, if we needed something picked up or dropped off. It's usually Ikea, but there are other places. Um, And I think uh, it's very important that in order for people to be able to serve, you have to be ready for people to serve you as well, because there will be times when when you need help, uh, whether it's major or minor. And we we have to be willing to accept help when we need it And, and joyously accepting that help when we need it. At the beginning of lockdown, when everything was in complete chaos, um, we had quite a few people be like, we know your jobs are going to be affected by this. Are you okay? Are you okay financially? Are you okay emotionally? Like, can we help? If you need, we can give and we can provide. And it was so lovely, whether or not we ever needed that help, like, it was so lovely to know that that support network was there, that, like, the body was working as a whole, that just because you don't have a moment, there will be someone else in the body that can help you fill that need. And you're supposed mm-hmm. to look at it. Yeah. That's how bodies work. Just knowing that it wasn't even that you're just that your church family were there and ready to help you out, but that God was providing for you and God is there and he will provide for you, be that through the church family, through the body, like through other means, like that is a big way of him providing for you, mm-hmm. which was just wonderful. So for us, it was quite similar. Um, at the start of lockdown, our wedding was cancelled. And on the day of the actual cancelled wedding date, we had so many messages from people saying, we're praying for you, um, you know, let us know what we, what, you know, what we can do for you. And for us, it was really encouraging because as much as you know, it's lockdown, we're in a flat, we're on our own. Well, we're separated at this point, but we're on our own. Uh, there's a bunch of people out there praying and taking the time to message <laughs> and send words of support. And again, it just points to just the small actions. This is all part of be, this is all part of being part of the body, the church. You know, just of doing the smaller things every week, every day, and it goes a long way for the person that receives it. And it is often very practical and very unseen and very small. And and one of the privileges of, of, of the position I have is I get it gets to see a lot of it. And and I was just thinking as we were talking earlier about the time that um, Sarah very kindly stepped in at quite short notice. We, uh, sometime in October, we started live streaming the meeting, which techni- technically was quite complicated. And all of a sudden we had almost no one who could do it. And um, because she's married to Sam, she got <laughs> asked, I think. Now, Sarah, to my knowledge, isn't particularly, you're not particularly kind of technical, but because we needed someone to do it, Sarah stepped in and ran the live stream on that Sunday. So church for the whole church family happened not actually because Sarah had the gift of technical ability, but because Sarah was willing to serve the body, which yeah. in the end is what it's all about. It's not necessarily about saying, this is my gift and I'll use it. It's about saying, this is the body and I'll serve it. Yeah. And over the course of lockdown, there's been a privilege to see loads of people acting in that way. Church Sunday, but because we've had to invent church every other week, um, <laughs> it's been wonderful seeing different people stepping up in different ways to serve, to be filmed, to to play music, to edit things, whatever it is. So the body is, even in lockdown, is still working really well to the glory of God. Hey, look, thank you very much for being willing to speak. It's really encouraging to hear. It is an expression of service of the body in and of itself. So we're really grateful. But now we're going to sing together uh, as a church family to close our evening off together. We're going to sing a song that speaks of this reality of being the church of God. So let's sing. Church of God, elect and glorious, holy nation, chosen race, called as God's own special people, royal priests and heirs of grace. Know the purpose of your calling, show to all his mighty deeds. Tell of love which knows no limits, grace which meets all human which meets all human needs. Mm-hmm. 
God has called you out of darkness into his most glorious light. Brought his truth to life within you. Turn your blindness into sight. Let your light now shine around you. That God's name is glorified. And all find fresh hope and purpose in Christ Jesus crucified. In Christ Jesus crucified. Once you were an alien people, strangers to God's heart of love. But he brought you home in mercy, citizens of heaven above. Let his love flow out to others, let them feel a father's care. That they too may know his welcome, and his countless blessings share. And his countless blessings share. Church of God, elect and holy, be the people hidden in Strong in faith and quick to answer, each command your master sends. For your priests fulfill your calling, through your sacrifice and prayer. Give your lives in joyful service, sing his praises, love declare. Sing His praise, His love declares. Be Thou my vision, O Lord of my heart. No best thought in the day or the night, waking and sleeping, thy presence my light. Be thou my wisdom, be thou my true word. My great Father, and I thy true Son, Thou in me dwelling, and I with Thee one. Be Thou my breastplate, my sword for the Oh 
pre-recorded part of the meeting to a close but as ever uh, we're going to gather on zoom afterwards and i guess from listening to what god said to us tonight you can immediately see how uh, as a body together it might be important for us to keep on doing that so come and join us over on zoom in a few minutes time but before you do that let me read to you again those words from romans chapter 12 to cap off our evening together in romans chapter 12 uh, the apostle paul says this though many We are one body in Christ and individually members of another. Amen. And we're out. <laughs> Welcome to my life. <laughs> I don't know how you do it, honestly. Speaking into a camera and then just staring at it for three or four seconds. <laughs> it's really annoying. Oh, anyway, let me stop is. recording.